Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to continue our look at the caged system, but we're going to be focusing on minor chords this week. A lot of times people will stop short with just major chords, but you got to know your minor chords all over the neck too. So in addition to learning how to play them, I'm also going to show you how to play this really cool bluesy standalone composition. You don't need a jam track for it, and this will be how you practice everything you're going to learn in this lesson. So you've got practical application for what you're about to learn so that it all starts to cement in your mind and starts to make sense. So in this video we're going to cover all the video lesson material, but if this is going too fast for you and you need a refresher, you can download the tablature and access the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive. You can slow it down, you can loop sections. You can get all of that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP275. Alright, so this lesson is an extension of the caged system. So if you're trying to understand what caged is, and maybe you're seeing this video out of context, you're going to want to start with a lesson I did a few weeks ago. That's part one, where we go over uh, the first half. So that would be EP273. That's the lesson number for that lesson. In this lesson, however, we're going to go over the minor chord shapes. So think of this as an extension off of that lesson. Now, if you want to skip ahead and go right to the composition, which is the practice composition for putting these minor chord shapes into play with fill licks and all of that, you can skip ahead to the time that's on the screen right now. But the meat of this lesson is really going to be what we cover prior to that, which is helping you understand how to play them. And by the end of this, by the end of watching this, you're going to be able to play minor chords all over the neck of the guitar. There's going to be a little bit of memorization you're going to have to do, uh, but it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple outside of that. Okay, so caged. C, A, G, E, D. That's five chord shapes that we covered in that previous lesson. Now, when it comes to minor chords, there's really only three, so we can get rid of the G and we can get rid of the C. You don't use those chord shapes when it comes to minor chords. And people have made entire careers out of, uh, well I guess I have, out of just playing these three minor chord shapes. It's your E minor chord shape, your A minor chord shape, and your D minor chord shape. Those are the three big ones that you're going to use over and over again as you're playing minor chords. And if you think about back in your mind, like back to when you first started playing guitar, those first chords that you learned, your G chord, your D chord, all those basic first position chords, think of the, the minor chords that you learned that were down in first position that had open strings. There are really only three. You had an E minor, an A minor, and a D minor. Those were your minor chord shapes. And we're going to repurpose those minor chords all over the neck uh, using this system. Now I'm sure somebody out there is going to correct me and say, no, 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 you got to learn the, uh, the C minor chord shape as well because of... I've just never used it. I've never even thought about it that way. Um, and actually, you're going to use the E shape, the E minor shape, and the A minor shape the most. And then that D minor shape comes in handy in certain spots. But those are the two big ones, the E and the A minor. Okay, so now in the previous lesson, I explained that you did not have to memorize the names of the note, all, notes all over the neck. You could start with one chord, and you could connect those chords all the way up the neck by different anchor points. And I showed you what those were, and like Legos, they all fit together. So you could start with one chord in first position and work your way up. Um, that's not the case when it comes to these minor chords. Because there's gaps in between, because we got rid of the, the A, or I'm sorry, we got rid of the G and we got rid of the C, so we're going to have to do some memorization. Um, in particular, on the low E string, or the 6th string, and the fifth string. We're going to need to know the names of the notes on those two strings. And if you don't know them by now, you need to know them anyway. It's time to, to memorize those and commit those to memory. Now let me show you a quick and easy way to do that, and then we'll get into the chord shapes, because the two connect. You're going to have to start with knowing the names of the notes here. So let's start on this E string, the sixth string. Well, another nice little thing, if you're memorizing the names of the notes, you have two E strings in the guitar. So once you learn it on one string, you actually got it on the second. So that's two strings out of the way. Um, but let's start with that uh, first one. So you have an E note, and then the next, if I were to play the first fret, that's an F. And if you think about a piano, for those of you that are piano players, you have an E and then an F. There's no black key in between those two. So they go right, right beside each other. And that happens on the guitar too. So you have open and then your first fret. But then we're going to skip. So think of this skip here as your black key on the piano. We're only going to learn the root notes. We're not going to learn the sharps and flats. We're just going to get those root notes first. E, F, third fret is a G. What's nice about the guitar, and most guitars are the same, your third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, they all have fret markers. So you have little dots on them to help you visualize where you are in the neck. 
And those come in handy when you're learning, memorizing the, the, the names of the notes. I know that some guitars are set up different, like my Martin, for example, doesn't have a third fret marker and so forth, but for the most part, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. So we have E, F, G, A. Now from A, it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The only things we started with the E. So we have E, F, G. Now we've started all over again. A, we're going to come up to the uh, seventh fret, B. Now what is interesting about the ninth fret is always think of that as like a little fence. This is just a visual to help you. Um, and so we're going to play a note on this side of the fence and on this side of the fence. So once we get to that um, B, we're going to go up one fret, which would be a C. Think of a piano. Between the B and C, there is no black key. So we're just going to, we don't have a, a key to, a fret to skip here. So we've got B, C, we're going to jump over the fence to D. And then it resets itself at E. And that's really it on the whole string. From here on up, it's the same as what we started here. It's just an octave higher. So all you have to really do is get up to the 12th fret. So that's what you need to start with. It's just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and then back to your E. Now those that you skipped, those are going to be either sharps or flats. So for example, if I play this note, which would be the 4th fret, that would be a G sharp or an A flat. But start by learning your root notes there. So that's the sixth string. That's also the first string. So now you know all the notes on the sixth string and the first string. So let's go on to the fifth string. So your open fifth string is an A. Uh, your next root note would be a B. So if you're playing the second fret on the fifth string, that's a B. So you have open, second, and then you're going to go up. Remember, after a B on the piano keyboard, there is no black key. So you're going to go from a B to a C. B, C. Nothing to skip there. And then from this third fret, we're going to play C, D, E. And just like I showed you on the sixth string, you got the little fence there on the ninth fret. Once you come up to the E, you're going to go F. Because remember, on the piano, between the E and the F, there's no black key. So you have E, F, jump over the fence, G, and then all the way back to your A again. So you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G makes sense A and once you have that memorized so now you've got your sixth string memorized you've got your fifth string memorized and you've got your first string memorized all right so now that you have the names of the notes memorized this is how you use them so remember you had your E string and your A string and if you remember back to the previous lesson on caged we talked about the E chord shape and the A chord shape the two are connected and here's what I mean by that. If we're talking about an E chord shape, down at, playing an E chord in first position, if I go up here and I bar here on the third fret, look at where my finger's playing. That's that sixth string. What is that note? That third E, F, G. So wherever I'm barring, if I'm using the E chord shape, and I'm referencing that E note, or the E string rather, that is now a G chord using the E chord shape. So if I want to play a G minor chord, all I do is I take that chord shape and I remove my middle finger. That's a G minor chord. And look at that, that's just your E minor chord down in first position, but we've slid it up to here, just like we did with the major chords. And hopefully that's starting to make sense. Now if I said to play an A major chord using the E chord shape, remember E chord shape, okay, E string, where's the A note on the E string? It's here, so all I gotta do is bar there, put these fingers in the E chord shape, that's an A chord. Now if I said play an A minor chord using the E chord shape, you're doing the same thing. It's the same thing, you just remove your middle finger. And that's your A minor chord. Hopefully that makes sense, it makes it easy. So now you can play a minor chord all over the neck using this E minor chord shape. Now the same exact thing uh, works, but now we're going to play it uh, for it on the A string, or use the A chord shape, which connects to the A string. For example, if I'm showing you an A chord down in first position, and I said play a C chord using the A chord shape, now you just have to find the C note on the A string. So think about that for a minute. You're going to play a C chord using the A chord shape. So all I have to do is find that C note, which is on the fifth string, and there's my 
C chord using the A chord shape. Now to make that a minor chord, all I'm doing is I'm taking these three fingers now and making the A minor chord shape. So think of your A minor chord, if you were to slide it up, and you're barring there on that, that root note is your C note, that's a C minor chord. So if I said play a D minor chord using the A, a minor chord shape, you're just going to find, because we're on A, so we're on that fifth string, there's your D note, so we're just going to play a D minor like that. And those will be the minor chord shapes that you use the most, that E minor chord shape and then the A minor chord shape. And once you've got those strings memorized, if I told you play a, a, a B minor chord, now you can look at it two ways. You can play it like this, or you can play it like this. Because I know a B note is here on the sixth string and here on the fifth string. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, that's, those are the two main ones. There's that third one though. And that looks, that's the one where we take the D minor chord shape down in first position and we reuse that one. Now instead of playing it like this where I've got the open string, which would be behind the nut here, that open D string, I, these three fingers are the same, but I take my ring finger and put it down, in this case it would be on the third fret fourth string. And that's also a D minor, it's just changing the, the bass note, or the root note. So now I can take that chord shape, and you've seen this chord shape used in, in quite a bit. This is a very commonly uh, used chord shape. But that's a minor chord shape. So now I can take that shape and play it anywhere on the neck. Now here's the, the thing though, when it comes to memorizing the notes, remember I said you're going to need to definitely memorize the sixth string and the fifth string and the second string as well if you if you want to use this chord. And there's two ways of finding this chord shape. I'll show you the first one and then the second one may be even easier for you. I'm not sure, but let's start with this second string. That's your B string. That's a B note by default. And so if you knew the names of the notes all over that B string, you know that that's a C. So if you think about your C chord. That's a C note. So you have B, C, and you come up to a D and an E and you keep going with it. You can memorize the notes of, the, of that string just like you did the others. Once you have that committed to memory, when you're making the, the D minor chord shape like I showed you, it's wherever your pinky is, the second string, that's your root note in that chord. And that's why that one is a little bit unusual, having it on the second string. So if I said to play an E minor using the D minor chord shape, it would be up here because this note is an E note. That's a D, that's an E. And so I just, it's wherever my pinky is when I'm making this chord shape, that that is the root of the chord. And so that's a little unusual. You're gonna have to do some memorization. So this would be an E minor. This would be a G minor. This would be an A minor. And you're just gonna have to either know the names of the notes on that second string, or you could think of it this way. Uh, you could imagine your G minor chord using the E minor chord shape. That one's probably a lot easier, more intuitive. And you could think about the minor pentatonic scale pattern one off of that chord shape. So you could say, and wherever this note is, put your index finger there and make that chord. That's a G, a G minor. So that might be an easier way to think about it because you're using that first string instead, the high E string. So that would be a G minor. So, so using that same theory, if I said play an A minor chord now using that, that D minor chord shape, you could find your A minor like that, and then there's your minor pentatonic scale, wherever that note it, finger is. That would be your A minor. So that may be a different, an easier way of, of thinking about it. And the other way you could do it is you could just memorize these chord shapes. So you know that when you're playing that, it's an E minor, that's an F sharp minor, G minor, and so forth. Uh, but those are your three minor chord shapes. And once you understand those and you're able to play them in three different spots on the neck, you've really got all your bases covered in terms of playing a minor chord. Um, now what I want to do is take that knowledge and make a composition out of it that's fun to play and something that you can use to practice. You've got this little standalone composition. It sounds pretty cool on its own, but you're able to take these chord shapes, play some fill licks in between those chord shapes, 
uh, and play them all over the neck. So we're going to take advantage of all three of those different chord shapes as we break out this composition. All right, so let's start off by talking about the chord structure. Uh, and I am going to be brief as I go through this. I am going to cover all of it, so I'll show you the entire composition. But if you need more clarity or more time, uh, as a premium member, you're going to have access to the tablature for this and the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive. You can slow it down and you can loop sections and all of that. So I did want to mention that. Um, but I've already spent so much time going through the, the background of how to make these chords that I, I just, I'm kind of running out of time here. So, uh, let's talk about the chord structure. So it's a very simple basic chords. It starts with a G chord, which is a G major chord. And then we go to a C minor chord, an F minor chord, and a G major chord. It's just three chords. C minor, F minor, and G. And in between that, there's little fill legs that happen. And the reason I wrote this composition is so you can practice playing those same three chords in different three different positions on the neck with fill licks connecting the whole thing. So it ends up being this really cool little bluesy composition. All right, so I started this with a G major chord and just picked all the notes out of the chord. That's your five chord, so we're setting it up. And then I go into the, the minor one chord or the C minor chord, which sounds like this. And I'm making, I'm playing the C minor chord using the A minor chord shape, which I explained earlier in this video how to do that. So I'm not gonna show you the left hand. The right hand, the strum goes like this. This is down, up, and then mute. Down, up, mute. And when I say mute, I'm really just had, having my right hand kind of slap the strings to stop it from ringing out. Okay, so, the, and that's really the same strum pattern I'm gonna use throughout this thing. Now I've set it up. Now. Think of this as a call and response. That's the call. The re response is this fill lick that goes. And now we're going to be playing right out of the minor pentatonic scale pattern four for the key of C. And most of everything we're going to play, except for this one spot where I change it over the G chord, is going to be minor pentatonic scale, uh, C minor pentatonic scale. So just remember minor pentatonic scale pattern four. That's where we're starting here. And it starts on the third fret, fourth string. You slide up to the fifth fret. And then you come up here to the fifth fret, third string. And then the third fret, third string. You can see we've just made a little loop there. And then back to the fifth fret, fourth string. And then there's a quick slide down to the third fret, fourth string. So all together we have. And then, so that's the first fret, fourth string, and then the third fret, fifth string. And that's what happens after that first C minor chord. So you have, you can feel, you can start to feel the rhythm happening there. Notice I slapped it there to give it the timing. Another slap there. It's just to mute the strings. You don't have to slap there. You could tap your foot and that would work as well. And then you go to the F minor. Same strum pattern. Uh, we're still gonna be in pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale for C. We're gonna learn that lick. Very cool lick because it's following the same little box here on the sixth string, the fifth string, and the fourth string. So we're gonna go between the first fret and the third fret like this just walking right up using the same pattern. So it starts with a hammer on between the first fret and the third fret. And we walk all the way up to the fourth string. Slide up to the fifth fret, fourth string, and then do a half bend. And then you come back down on the third fret, fourth string. Now if you walk away with nothing else, that's an awesome fill lick. And hopefully you've, you can see, okay, that's just the bottom part of pattern four. And if you don't know what I mean by pattern four, I go through all the patterns in the minor, or in the, in the blues lead course um, at Active Melody for premium members. All right, let's back up from the beginning. There's our setup chord. Then we go into the C minor. F minor. Then I went, I walked up from 1st fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, all in the 6th string. That's just a, a, think of it like a bass player walking you up to that, that uh, the 5 chord, which is going to be a major chord. So those two are minor chords. This one's a major chord, and that's a very common scenario when you're playing a minor key song. You have your minor 1, your minor 4, but then a major 5. 
So that's the same strum pattern, uh, but I'm just playing a G major chord, and then I played. Let me show you that. Now notice that's different. So now we're getting out of the minor pentatonic scale and getting into the major scale for, or the, the major pentatonic scale for G. So in this one spot, I switched the scale to match the chord. And a lot of this is just playing around the chord shape. So that first lick is just, just the top part of your G bar chord. So I'm barring the first three string, strings there on the third fret, playing the fourth string, doing a hammer on between the third and fourth fret. And then I do an upstroke on string one, which is behind the bar there, third fret. And then I match that note by sliding up to this G note, which is on the 8th fret 2nd string. That's a very common blues lick. It's a great, that's another huge takeaway lick. You could use that in anything. And then from here I went. So that's a hammer on uh, from the 6th fret 1st string to the 7th fret. And then you play the 8th fret 2nd string. And you can see where we're at here is we're in pattern 2 of the minor pentatonic scale for G. Because remember, we've switched the scale to match the chord in this one spot. After that, you do a slide from the 7th fret to the 5th fret on the 3rd string. Now we're going from pattern 2 back down to pattern 1. And then we're going to do another hammer on, similar, similar thing. Uh, but just an octave lower, so it's uh, the third fret, third string, hammer on to the fourth fret on the third string. So, and then your ring finger goes down on the fifth fret, fourth string. And then I strum the chord, because you can see what I've done is I've just built the chord. I've already got my G chord built there. Um, all right, from the beginning. the C minor chord and I played that's just two notes out of the chord it's just strings four or sorry three and two I just singled out those notes and then your G chord your five chord now that just set up the cadence for the whole thing so that's part one think of that as part one part two is gonna be the exact same thing but we're gonna use different chord voicings so now I'm going to take my, remember we started with the C minor chord? I'm going to use the C minor chord, uh, play the C minor chord using the E minor chord shape, which is up here. <laughs> That's barring the 8th fret. And if you remember what we discussed at the beginning of the video, we went through all the notes, the names of the notes. That's your C note on the 6th string, well, on your E string, so we're playing the E minor chord shape. So same strum pattern. And then I come down here and do this Robin Ford lick, which I love. I use this all the time. So think about this as being a pattern five of the minor pentatonic scale for C. So we're back playing over a C. And actually, I'm going to stay in C for the rest of this. So I'm to, to play that, I bar the first two strings here on the sixth fret. And then I do a hammer on here to the eighth fret second string. Then take that finger off and play uh, the first two strings on the sixth fret. So we have... It's a cool sounding lick. So we have... And then right after that, I went really cool lick there. Kind of a BB King, Eric Clapton style lick. There's a little bit of both of their influence in that. So it starts by um, you bar the first. Now this is minor pentatonic scale pattern one for C. Just C minor pentatonic scale pattern one, barring the first two strings on the eighth fret, and then I've got my ring finger here on the uh, tenth fret, third string. We're going to do a full bend and then play string two and one. It's like a Chuck Berry lick. And then I'm going to go up here to the 11th fret, second string, and do a full bend and then match that note on the 8th fret, first string. So you're bending to that note and then you're going to play that same note on the first string. That lick is an Eric Clapton lick that he uses all the time different variations on it, but it's the same thing where you're bending to a note and then you're matching that note. After that I went just 
just walked right down minor pentatonic scale pattern one. Eleventh fret second string, uh, eighth fret second string, tenth fret third string, eighth fret third string. Last note is the tenth fret fourth string. So those are just walking right down that pattern one. All right, so once we come to the second grouping of chords, it sounds like this. Okay, and then it goes to... We go to the F minor, so that was your C minor. Now I'm playing the F minor like this. And you'll know what that chord shape is. That's using that D minor chord shape. Remember, I explained that in the beginning, so it's going to be right here. So that's your F note. Remember I said where your pinky is on the second string? So we come down and play this. And then the fill licks would be the C minor pentatonic scale, pattern five, going down to pattern four. So it's between, it starts in pattern five and goes to pattern four. So I'm sliding here from the sixth fret up to the eighth fret on the second string. And then you play the sixth fret first string. So you have. And then you go from the 8th fret, slide it down quickly, back down to the 6th fret. And then you play the 4th fret 2nd string. So all that was on the 2nd string there. Well, not that note, but... And then I play... Two slides from the 6th fret to the 8th fret on the 2nd string. Now, if you would rather bend that, you could do that as well. But that was what I was doing. Um, okay, so from that F minor, and then it goes to the G chord, and right, and so instead of playing the G chord like this, I played it up here. Actually, I played it like this, and that's using um, out of the cage system. The first one would be using the E chord shape. This would be using that C chord shape, but I'm just using the top four strings. So it's the same strum pattern, and then the the lick goes. And that's minor pentatonic scale pattern one for C. So even though we're playing a G chord here, and remember the first time I played the G chord, I switched the scale to match the chord. I did not do that this time. I'm just staying in the key of the song, which is C. So you can do that. You can play just C minor pentatonic scale for the entire thing, no matter what the chord changes are. And it's gonna work. So that's eighth fret, second string, up here to the 11th fret, second string, and then back to the eighth fret. And then a quick slide from the 11th fret 3rd string, that's that blue note out of your blues scale. And then you slide it down to the 10th fret, and then you do a pull off to the 8th fret 3rd string. So I'm just picking that one. And then I'm playing the uh, 10th fret 3rd string. And actually, when I played that 10th fret 3rd string, I, I didn't even pick that, I hammered that on. And it looks like that. So from the G chord, that last note there would be the 8th fret 3rd string. And then I played. You've heard me use this lick before in other things. I just love it. It's kind of a go-to lick for me. Um, and let all of these licks become part of your vo vocabulary. Don't just memorize them, but memorize them in context so that you could use. You know, anytime you're playing over a blues solo. Um, so. So this thing, I'm going to bar the first four strings here on the 8th uh, fret, and I'm going to play strings 4 and 3, do a hammer-on to the 10th fret, string 4, and then back to 4 and 3 without any, on their own. And then, that's a slide from the, this is on the 5th string, it's a slide from the 10th fret down to the 8th fret, down to the 6th fret. And again, this is all pattern 1 of the minor pentatonic scale for C. So let's let's back it up from this uh, second grouping of chords. We'll start here with the C minor like this. Here's your G. And then we go back to the C minor like this. And then play. That's just walking right up minor pentatonic scale pattern one, ring finger starts on the 8th fret 5th string, slides up to the 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 
eighth fret. And then I played, it's kind of like the turnaround chord. That's a G chord. So I'm giving you different, not just the minor chords, but the major chord, that one major chord in three different spots as well. So we've played the G down here, we played it here, and now we're playing it up here using the A chord shape. So that's barring uh, the first four strings there on the 12th fret, my index finger is on the 10th fret, fifth string. We're only playing the middle four, four strings. All right, so those are the first two chord groupings. Now we're gonna play the third one and the last one using the same three chords. We're gonna start with a C minor chord, but we're gonna play it up here using that D minor chord shape. Uh, just like we played that F minor chord shape, same chord shape, but now our index finger is up here on the 11th fret. So it's gonna sound like this, the C part's gonna go. That's the first lick we're gonna learn, uh, or first part. Same little strum pattern, there's your C minor chord, and then the response to that goes, and that's just playing, uh, the. Uh, this would be uh, pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for C. Pattern one is here, pattern two is here. We're just playing those two notes together out of that, a little harmonized thing. So my ring finger comes up to the 13th fret second string, my index finger is on the 11th fret first string. And I gave that some vibrato as I played both of those. And then I played. So that's a hammer on between the 11th fret and the 13th fret on the second string. Back to the 11th fret. And then a quick slide from the 12th fret down to the 10th fret on the third string. So now we're going from pattern two back down to pattern one of the C minor pentatonic scale. And then there's a slide. Now you could have bent that, I could have bent that. But I was thinking more for, there's a lot of acoustic players out there, and I just thought, I don't know, I was in the mood to slide, I guess. But that's a slide from the 10th fret to the 12th fret. Uh, and then I come down to the 8th fret on the 3rd string. And then back to the 10th fret, 3rd string. And then my uh, middle finger goes down on the 10th fret, 4th string. And then that last note is the 8th fret, 3rd string. So let's take it from the beginning of that C minor chord. Alright, and then we go to the F minor chord, but this time I'm going to play it here. I'm going to be using the A minor chord shape. So we're playing an F minor, so we played an F minor here, played an F minor here, and now we're playing an F minor up here. There's your response leg. Same strum pattern there. So we're gonna slide back up to pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for C. So that's the 13th fret second string, 11th fret first string, 13th fret first string, and then you slide up to the 15th fret first string. And then watch this, you play. That's great real fun little versatile lick that you can use. So all I'm doing is I'm playing, this is again pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale, but 13th fret first string, doing a slide up to the 14th fret and then back to the 13th fret. Now some people might use their pinky to do a hammer on a pull off thing. I just find it easier to slide that. And then I do a pull off down to the 11th fret first string. So I'm only picking that once. All right, so. Then we go back to the 13th fret first string, 13th fret second string, and then the 11th fret first string. Hopefully these notes aren't mysterious notes that are just floating around. Hopefully you can understand. Okay, they're just pattern two. We're playing in C minor. You just got a handful of notes there in pattern two, and that's what we're, we're, we're just milking those. Okay, so the C minor, F minor, then the G. I'm gonna play that same G just like we did as the turnaround chord to get us out of the, the, the last little grouping, the second grouping. Um, so it looks like that. And then I played. So that's 12th fret, third string. We're gonna slide into that. 11th fret, 2nd string, 
13th fret second string, full bend, it's kind of an Albert King thing. So after your full bend on the 13th fret second string, you're going to come back to the 11th fret second string and play that and then 12th fret third string. And then I played. So after I played that, I came back down to pattern one and jumped right into the middle of it here on the third string. So that'll be the 10th fret. Do a full bend and release and a pull off. Bend, release, pull off. So I'm only picking that once. Actually, and then I do a hammer on there. And actually another pull off. So in actual fact, I'm really only picking that once. And then we go back to the C minor. And then there's a little fill leg, also in pattern one of C minor pentatonic. Uh, eighth fret to the tenth fret on the fourth string. A little hammer on. And then I played strings two and three on the eighth fret. And then I came all the way back down here to play the G chord so that I could loop the whole thing and start it all over again from the C minor. So that allows me to go from all the way down here playing uh, those chords to the middle spot playing those chords to the high spot on the neck with fill licks in between and then it resets itself back to where we started. It's a lot of information, but it's pretty cool. It's a great way to practice this because, you've, like I said, you've got a standalone thing that sounds pretty cool on its own. But while you're doing that, you're learning these different chord voicings. So don't just memorize stuff. Let it sink in that this is a C minor, and this is a C minor, and this is a C minor, and so forth and so on. All right, let me back up and play through this entire composition one more time. And remember, if, this, if I was going too fast or if you, you, know, you need better clarity, Check out Premium Membership, it's a great deal. I put out lessons like this every week and uh, you have access to the entire back catalog, hundreds of uh, in-depth lessons like this. Okay, uh, from the beginning.